Facebook page for their course. Okay, well, that answers that question for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a, another question that uh, had involved Zoom or other techno issues, and it is uh, about doing the uh, the words on a video. <coughs> um, or will that be covered at some point? How no, the, the, this is actually more for students. Right. This webinar here. But you could definitely reach out to Tim for those questions. Okay, will do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, are we ready? I think yeah. we're live. Um, we're live. Okay. So. So welcome to our uh, uh, final of these series on uh, uh, TOCC's response to COVID nineteen and our transition to online. We may be doing more of these in the future just to help uh, keep our community college uh, up to date, but we'll have more as we go on. Um, I'd like to start this morning by introducing our panel. Uh, and uh, as we can see, they're all here and we'll go through and introduce uh, each other. Uh, my name is Dr. Curtis Peterson. I'm the Dean of Education and I'll be here this morning to talk about education division which includes instruction issues, transition to online, expectations about uh, online learning, library services, and um, as advising. Uh, next we have uh, Dean Joanne Miguel. Do you want to introduce yourself Joanne? Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Joanne Miguel, the uh, Dean of Finance, and I will co be covering a, a few um, finance uh, quest or slides today. Thank you. And we have joining us Dr. Mario Montes Hu, who is the Dean of Sustainability. Mario, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm the Dean for Sustainability, and I oversee IT, so we are going to be talking about IT issues, uh, the support for students and, and faculty. We also have joining us Dean Naomi Tom, the Dean of Student Services. Naomi, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Naomi Tom. I'm the Dean of Student Services, and I'll be briefly going over uh, the services that we can still offer students um, over uh, either over the phone or via email. Um, we can be flexible with you, and I'll, I'll be going over that. So thank you for joining us. And we'll also have joining us sometime this morning, Dr. Paul Robertson, who is the uh, president of the college. Um, I'm not sure if he's on our, our webinar right at this moment, but he'll be joining us shortly. Patriotic. Hi, Paul. Would you like to say some words? A very good morning, if that's possible, in these circumstances, to all of you and all the participants. And um, we just are here to share some uh, helpful hints about uh, this online transition and, and related matters. The college is, as you know, essentially shut down physically. We try to do mo most everything virtually, like this meeting. And uh, that'll be an ongoing process for some time. We're just working out the kinks and trying to figure out the technology, some of us, just like the students are, and some of the faculty who haven't done online before. Uh, we're having these meetings, we'll be having more down the line, just in an effort to uh, help people over that hump so they could get a little bit comfortable at least with their online environment. So good morning to you all. Thanks for being here. And Paul, while we have you on here, would you like to talk a little bit about the closure of our physical operations that uh, just occurred this week? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Curtis. In line with the uh, executive order from the chairman, Chairman Ned Norris of the Donna Autumn Nation uh, that occurred the uh, same day that Governor Ducey in Arizona uh, sent out an executive order uh, regarding stay at home, we are uh, 
responding also by staying at home whenever possible, except for certain what we're calling uh, essential functions. So when you, our campus sites are pretty much closed down. Um, we have a couple maintenance people coming in from time to time. Uh, we have security still operating at attenuated hours, Monday through Friday during the day from about nine to four. Uh, this morning we had one instructor who was going over to Komskut Iwalasik Mashkmakud, that would, our former central campus it was named behind the middle school and the gate was open. Uh, she went in, she was going to just hand off some materials to students there in the art class. Of course, the alarm went off. And so we're still trying to, uh, we're still trying to figure out how to do this operation with minimal people, but we're even going so far now as to draft uh, statements that people can carry with them in their cars, uh, explaining why they are essential so that if a law enforcement officer were to stop them to ask them why they're traveling, we could let them know. So we're pretty much really hunkered down, except for this type of virtual opportunity. Thank you. So I just want to provide a short statement, and I think the president uh, pretty well laid it out, is the purpose of uh, our COVID response is to ensure the safety of our students, staff, and faculty, uh, but also continue um, educational opportunities by adjusting our courses to go online instead of in person through, through the spring of 2020 semester. We're also going to offer only online classes during the summer of 2020, uh, going along with recommendations from the CDC and, and the state on how long um, um, we're expected to be needing to maintain a good social distance. Um, we're expected to go back to normal operations in the fall of 2020 but we are making backup plans just in case we are in a similar situation. So uh, regardless, we will either be delivering in normal operations by fall of 2020, or we'll be able to continue to offer our educational um, uh, offerings uh, online through fall. But as of right now, we're expecting to go back to normal operations. So as I said, I'm the Dean of, of Education, and so I'd kind of like to explain a little bit about uh, the online learning and instruction uh, that, that students should be expected. We realize that this is new for many of our students uh, who are used to the face-to-face -face and traditional campus delivery. And so we want you to know that we're here to support you completely uh, your instructors, uh, the staff at Student Services, uh, our IT are all here for you to help you be successful. But uh, in this first week, what I really strongly want to encourage all students to do is make sure you can access your Canvas, um, that you can log in and you can uh, go through the pages. Um, make sure you read instructors' updated syllabuses so you know the expectations for the course. But most important, if you have any questions, please communicate with your instructor. This is the most important part. Um, uh, as they say, the only stupid question is a question not asked. And so uh, your instructors are there. They're prepared to answer your questions um, and, and available to you. There was a question last time, when should I expect a return email from my instructors? Instructors should return all their emails within 24 hours. Um, I'm kind of expecting them to deliver, uh, respond to emails throughout the day as they get them. Uh, but if you don't hear a response from your instructor within 24 hours, please contact me directly and I will check into the situation. And also for, for continued feedback, instructors are expected to make sure that they give feedback on assignments within 48 hours and feedback on major papers and projects within seven days. So those are kind of the times you could expect feedback for, for your work. I'd like to mention a little bit about the expectations of online learners, especially for those who have not taken online classes. You should dedicate at least six hours per week for a three credit class. So that goes up about two hours for every credit. Um, for a lab class, I would actually add about two to three hours uh, to 
allow time to complete any online labs or labs that are required by the instructor. So, and the difference between online learning and face-to-face -face is face-to-face -face forces us to schedule out time to attend those classes um, and to be present during the learning experience. With online learning, you have to become self-disciplined and making sure you set time aside each and every week. You make that a consistent time um, and, and you do it almost like a scheduled job. And that's the most successful way to make sure you maintain uh, your online class and to maintain all the required learning for that class. The other part about online learning versus face-to-face -face is it's an active learning type of uh, experience. When, when we have face-to-face, -face, it's more passive because we go sit in a classroom, we absorb the information, and then at some later time through an assignment or a test, we, we then uh, regurgitate it, as you would say. For online learning, it requires you as a learner to go seat, seek the knowledge and to go either read it, watch videos, but really integrate it and become more active. And I'll tell you, this is probably the two benefits that you'll get out of online learning is one, you uh, be, have to become self-disciplined and two, it turns you into an active learner. So I would encourage you while we're on this online format to hone those skills if, if those are issues that you have. Uh, the other thing that I want to make our students aware of is education policy changes. These are temporary policy changes to help students out through this uh, crisis. And the first one is the pass-fail option. Students for this semester have the option, instead of getting a letter grade, they can request a pass or a fail. Uh, there are drawbacks and benefits to the pass-fail option, and what I would encourage students to do is read it in your instructor's syllabuses, and then talk with your instructors about the benefits and drawbacks. Uh, one of the benefits as of right now is that um, all of Arizona's universities will accept pass-fail uh, for transfer. One of the drawbacks is, is, is we can't guarantee that those courses will transfer if you go to a private university or a university out of state. So make sure you talk with your instructor and really know the benefits and drawbacks. The purpose of PassFell is to try and get rid of some of that performance anxiety that a lot of students may have from transferring online or due to the stress of, of our COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, the other uh, policy that has been changed is our incomplete policy. We've waxed the requirements for an incomplete uh, to allow students who have to care for a, a sick relative or if, or if our students become sick themselves, that they'll have the option to, to complete that course through an incomplete. And again, I want you to encourage you to communicate with your instructor uh, know what those requirements are, but they are, they are much lack so that we can encourage our students' success. Um, as far as library services, we still have all our online library services for references and for looking up materials, and we also have virtual tutoring. Um, on Facebook Live and in your student email, you should have received information on how to access uh, your virtual tutoring and how to access the library services. So I would encourage you to look at your email or to look at our Facebook fa page at TOCC. But if you have any questions regarding this, you can get a, he get a hold of our uh, library director, Liz Sabeda, and her email address is, is on this slide. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is academic advising. It's important to look at your academic future so that you can continue your educational success. So I want to encourage you, if you're in a program of studies such as social work, uh, any of the sciences, uh, education, um, or business, to get a hold of uh, those instructors in that area. 
and they can advise you on, on courses and careers and continued success um, and talk about any issues that you might be having to, to uh, achieve your academic success, success. We also have our academic advisor who is Iris Francisco and her email is here too. She will be setting up uh, times that students can meet her on Zoom um, and, and be able to interact with her on a weekly basis to figure out your academic uh, uh, schedules and, and future there. And advising services are also continuing to be offered through student services. And uh, this is a great segue to go into Dean Toms and services about student services and she can uh, uh, provide more information on that. So uh, Dean Tom, do you wanna take over? Sure, thank you. Um, so just as before, many of our staff in student services is able, are able to assist in academic advising. Um, we really work with those students who are undecided with majors, um, but if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to our staff. Um, so the slides I have here um, go over all the contact information for student services staff. Um, and I want to make sure that, uh, that it's available to you all. Um, the fastest response you'll get from um, our staff is via email. Um, however, they are able to answer um, or check their voicemails for their direct lines. So if you do call, leave a message, they will return um, your phone call. So that's why I still have their phone numbers in there. In addition to that, um, we have our main line at Don Altham Community College. It's the 520-383-8401. That line is still active and is being checked regularly every day. So if you call, please leave a, a voicemail and we will get back to you. Um, we've had a lot of people call and just hang up, but just leave a voicemail and we will get back to you. Um, in our efforts to try to reach out to students and accommodate them and assess what type of um, equipment they might need for going online, uh, we run into a lot of instances where students' information is out of date, uh, phone numbers are no longer in service, or they've changed. Um, so we urge you to please, if you've changed your phone number since you registered with TOCC, to let us know, update your information. Our Office of Admissions and Registration, uh, those are the individuals you can reach out to to update that information. Um, our financial aid office is able to assist um, over the phone, filling out an application uh, for next year. <clears throat> if you have any questions on financial aid, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our uh, counselor, Alberta, she has been amazing meeting with students over the phone, uh, communicating with them. Uh, so if you need help or need someone to talk to, this is a very stressful time for a lot of people. I urge you to please reach out to her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also um, our retention coordinator, Ron Felix, again, he's also very helpful with um, academic advising. Um, we have our transition coordinator, uh, Ms. Anna Marie Stevens. Uh, this is a pivotal time for those who are considering transferring to a university. Um, and I don't want this to discourage you of putting through those applications. She is available to assist with transfer applications if you need that help. Um, our special projects and initiative manager, uh, Daniel Sistiaga, he um, oversees our dual enrollment program. If you have questions on dual enrollment, he's been working very closely with the administration at our partnered high schools that we offer classes at. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to him. Um, our recruiter, Chandra Kloss, she has been um, routed to manage all of our social media. And so if you're comfortable reaching out via social media, uh, send us an instant message, we'll get back to you. Uh, we can help in that way as well. <clears throat> and then lastly, definitely not least, uh, I don't want to forget our Skiki Mashimaki, our Phoenix Center. Um, we have students in the Phoenix area. Uh, we, the question came up uh, during our last webinar as if the offices there are gonna be closed. Yes, they are just as the rest of the college is, um, but please don't hesitate to reach out to, to Jivik or to Sheena. They are there to help and assist. I will know I'll be meeting with, um, passing off some equipment to Tashina later on this morning uh, to help those students um, in our Phoenix area. 
Uh, so again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are working remotely, but we are definitely able to assist you in any way possible. So thank you. All right, thanks, Naomi. And next we have uh, Dr. Mario Montes Hulu with uh, sustainability and IT. Mario? Yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to share some information regarding the support uh, from IT. Uh, the first thing that the students need to they need to be aware of is uh, when you lose your password, uh, there is a way to reset the password if you call to 383-0069 or email to technical support at DOCC and they are going to ask you for your ID or your birthday. So with that, uh, it is possible that you don't need to go to the college in order to reset your password and you can do it right away uh, using uh, your phone. Um, the other thing is uh, uh, the Canvas login and, and student learning online. I would like to share my screen if I can. Uh, so, I, can, can, can you turn it on so I can uh, share? <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, the, I don't know, you can see my screen now. Uh, here uh, we have the home page of TOCC and we have a student learning outline, uh, online uh, resources. Also we have faculty teaching online resources. So if you go to the student learning online, uh, you will find uh, the contact information, how to, uh, reset the, 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 the password is with the technical support from TOCC. And uh, here is the phone number and the, and the uh, uh, email. And also uh, you can click in these two links and there is two ways to uh, access Canvas. Uh, there is also information about the internet access that the uh, um, uh, TOUA is providing. Uh, we are aware that right now TOUA is overwhelmed with the use of the Wi-Fi's in some of the communities across the Tohono O'odham Nation. And we need to uh, uh, be, uh, we are aware of that is happening, but it's in the hands of TOUA. Uh, what we wanted to do is uh, to provide you with a way to connect to your classes is uh, if you have a smartphone from Verizon, TOUA, even another carrier, uh, we can uh, provide you with the pay of uh, having the hotspot turned on in your, in, your, in, your, in your cell phone. So in that way, you can hook up a device to your, your, your phone that is, 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 is going to be used as a hotspot connected to the internet. Um, there are uh, some resources here in the, in, the, in, the, in the same page where you can go and see how you can turn uh, on the hotspot in your cell phone and also in, in a, an a iPhone. Um, there is so, so, some more resources, how to use the Zoom meeting and, or how to uh, use the Google Hangouts uh, or the Google Meet. And uh, we have also a list of uh, resources for, uh, for Canvas where the students can see videos uh, in order to learn how to use the, the system. So um, the other thing is uh, that I wanted to talk about it is uh, alert, alert Media. Alert Media is a system that you uh, may uh, have a, a message from Alert Media in order for you to register to TOCC uh, system. In that way, you are, are going to be able to receive uh, a phone call or, or a text or email or even the, the three forms of uh, communication. Uh, so um, you will, will have a, a way to, to keep update with the things that are happening at the college. So one other way is to use the Facebook, uh, check your email, uh, 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 quite frequently, but the, this is another way for, for you to receive a, 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 a media or a, I mean to receive a, a message from the college uh, with information. Um, uh, another thing that I would like to, to talk a little bit is about 
we have some devices where you can use to use uh, the, 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 the learning management system, Canvas. Uh, we have iPads uh, right now at the library, but we, uh, we have the, the library closed. So what we are going to be doing is, for some students who already contact the, the, the library, and, and, and also uh, this is important to contact uh, Dean and Naomi Tom uh, in order to, to make arrangements to provide you with a device. So some students are going to get the device uh, 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 is going to be taken to the communities and give it uh, to, to them directly. But uh, it's a big task and we need to have the students to let us know about, about their needs. So that, I think this is basically what I have. All right, Mario, if you want to stop sharing your screen, I'll, I'll yes. get back to our presentation. And let's see. Let's see. Um, um, um. Hey Mario, I think you need to make me the host again on your end. I need to make yeah. me the host again. Uh huh. So how I do that? If you click on my name, and then there should be like three little dots on the right. Uh huh. And then you click on that, it should say make host. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right, and so next we have uh, Je Dean Joanne Miguel with Finance. Joanne? Hey, thank you. So today I want to uh, cover um, for students how um, tuition and fee payments. So we do want to let students know that the, um, we do have uh, two days, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, that the bookstore will be available by phone or email, um, we are closed to the public and those office hours will be from 8 to 5 p.m. We'll be available to accept payments by phone uh, via credit card. If you would like to um, take care of payment with check, you can mail the payments um, to the college. I did list the college um, address, John Altham Community College, Post Office Box 3129. Dallas, Arizona, 85634. You also can contact us um, should you have any questions um, on the balance or um, you, have, you want to pay for an official transcript, you can call us and the number to contact us at is 520-383-0059. Uh, uh, we are also available via email. You can email me and my email is jmiguel at tocc.edu, and we'll be able to uh, assist students. Um, also wanna cover um, for students who, um, who are resident life students. So for um, a student, students that were dorm residents for the spring semester, the college will be issuing a credit for those students that have moved out of the dorm. And the process will be um, the, the credit we have, will be applied to the student account and this will be done in April um, starting today we'll be working on those credits um, and also just to inform students that um, after the credit is applied to the student account um, any outstanding balance on your student account will have to be settled and uh, if there's a refund then a refund will be mailed to the student via check um, if a third party has paid for your housing, the, uh, the refund will be paid to the third party. And so um, those are the basic um, two items I, I wanted to discuss and will be available um, in the webinar for any further questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. 
So I'm going to turn the rest of the, uh, the, the presentation over to Naomi, um, who will be kind of the MC for the remainder of, of this. So um, Naomi, it's, it's all yours. Sure. So um, this is the part portion of the webinar where we are here live to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm looking in the chat on Facebook and on our webinar here. I haven't seen any questions come through. Um, so if there's any burning questions, now the time to ask them. Um, but I think I'll go ahead and start off with um, just for our panel panelists. If do you have any words of encouragement for our students right now with this stressful time and the transition that we're going through? Uh, Mario, did you want to start us off? Uh, yes, uh, I think the for me the most important part of uh, taking classes online is to have a schedule. Um, uh, you know, waking up in the morning, have a plan, uh, start from uh, the same at the same time every morning, and then to finish your work at the same uh, time in the in the afternoon. Remember, we are talking about maybe six hours of work that uh, you need to do in order to, to have a, a three credit class. And uh, the other thing that I think is, 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 uh, is uh, very important is communication. So you need to be asking questions to your faculty. You need to be asking questions uh, to maybe another, uh, uh, your, your peers, uh, you know, the, the students who are taking the class with you. And, uh, and that is, uh, is something that uh, is, is very important. And, and I, I know that it is, it's, it's a difficult one. Uh, we know that there are some uh, challenges with the, com the connectivity and the college is working and trying to figure out the best way to support you. So that's basically what I have. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Um I just want to encourage the students to, um, I think time management, as Mario stated, is, is very important. So I just want to encourage students to, um, to set aside time and, and dedicate that time to, to, um, for your, your learning. Um, also, just to encourage students to seek out resources, um, whether it be the college, online, there's a lot of resources available for students. And, and to, to reach out to us, we're, we're available, whether it's phone or email, just wanna um, make sure that students are aware of that and um, just to um, stay the course and, and, and uh, finish out this, the semester strong. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, Paul, did you have any words of encouragement for our students? Hang in. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... Of course, I, I agree that we are doing everything we can. Uh, we're in a resource poor environment in, in terms of uh, connectivity. We are doing, as everybody has pointed out, what we can as far as uh, providing devices to students who don't have them. And I know Naomi's, I believe, going up to Phoenix or Ski Kig Mashmaki today to hand off some uh, iPads that she and uh, Liz in the library and Deshaun Miguel were preparing, I think, for that group there and uh, we have a lot more to do uh, I think I don't know uh, I think it would be interesting for the people online to know how many requests we've had for devices do you happen to know the number <laughs> no I don't I thought I was okay. asking you know you guys were working on that yesterday and I we've had we've had um, a lot, and I actually haven't I haven't keep I have not been keeping the count. So, but we have quite a few. Do we have enough uh, devices to meet the demand? As of right now, we still do. I believe we still have devices available. Um, <clears throat> we are in a you know everybody talks about a digital divide, and uh, I think we're learning now how how big that division is how how wide that division is as students and others uh, who are now internet dependent uh, attempt to use that medium in order to communicate here on the nation it's a it's not a good thing i i, I jumped into an e-rate 
discussion this morning and then I was told, well, I wasn't really invited onto that call, so I got off of it. But, uh, but somehow I had gotten an invite, but they said that was a mistake. But E-rate it would be a way to uh, access much needed uh, support so that uh, more people could have better access to internet. Mario knows a lot more about that than I do, but, but uh, so in the longer run, up to the spring, I mean, we're, we're in spring, we're almost done up to the summer sessions. And it was stated yesterday, we might have one summer session. I think we're gonna need at least two summer sessions. If not, we won't have three, but we will still need two just in order to accommodate uh, the needs that some students may have if they wanna take up to 12 credits in two separate sessions, six per, per session. And so between now and summer, uh, we need to uh, really ramp up and get people advised to find out what their needs are in advance of the thing starting so we won't be interrupting in the middle like we were lucky we had spring break, I guess, in terms of timing. And, uh, but before those classes start, we want to make sure that each student that signs up knows how they're going to be able to access. And if they can't, uh, we need to provide the help we can. I guess that's the bottom line right now. In order to accomplish our mission, which is to deliver quality education, uh, we, you know, to, and to uh, also strengthen the Hemadoc, that's another piece of it, critical piece that we have. Uh, we have got to uh, focus our energies on that that link between the college and the, our students. Thank you. Um, so uh, the first question that came through is regarding something that you mentioned, Paul, the, the summer sessions. Um, I, uh, there's a question here is if, it'll, if those summer sessions will be a five week or eight week se sessions, sorry. I, I'm not, uh, some, or, some or all of the above, uh, we'll be able to tell you that by, by Friday. We'll post that by Friday. Thank you. And then I have another question coming through um, our Facebook feed is, uh, I believe from a student asking if students can still pick up art supplies today. Um, my response to that would be to contact your instructor directly. Uh, they would have uh, access to the art supplies and, and they should be able to make those arrangements with you. My understanding is that the art supply uh, supplier of the art supplies is uh, Linda Chappelle, and uh, she is over at Komskuri Waosik Mashmukut at the central campus now, and will be there till around noon, and has uh, art supplies to hand out to students. I know that because she's the one who activated the alarm by mistake this morning, and the police came over. But she's over there now, and I believe she emailed me she'll be there till noon at the central campus. So whoever that is needing that connection, uh, that's where you could. Uh, you could make it in the art art classroom there. Okay, and then I have another question asking when uh, when would I be able to pick up my chemistry kit? And I know students are picking up their chemistry kits um, on Monday. Um, do any of you have any information about the chemistry kits? <coughs> well, I think the student in chemistry 151, all of them have their kits. I think Jody uh, is the only student who do not, because he did not sign the waiver so far. Uh, I will coordinate with uh, Kia and Teresa to let him know when they can uh, pick the kids up. Thank you. Okay, so I haven't seen any new questions come through, but I think now would be also a good time to address some of the questions that came up during our last session. I know uh, one of the questions that came up before that's, uh, um, that relates to student services was um, we were asked about commencement. As you all are aware that commencement currently has been canceled. Um, I've been in communication with uh, a network of uh, college administrators of all community colleges statewide and collectively we're all brainstorming ideas of ways to appropriately honor our graduates. Um, this is uh, from the bottoms of our heart, you know, it, it is, uh, we are truly saddened that we're not gonna be able to 
go through with our ceremony as we traditionally do every May. Um, and we know it's hard for, for the graduates and their families. So we're really trying to find a way to um, come up with a, um, an, an alternative. So as soon as we have a plan for that, we will make that, that available. And then a question came through as if we think we might be able to postpone commencement and that, that is still an option that, that is being discussed. So um, I hope to have a plan for our graduates and, and um, those would be the first ones to be aware of, of what we'll be doing. Um, I know one of the other questions that came through um, and this was regarding IT. Um, and I'm not sure if this has changed at all since our last webinar is we had questions on if students would be able to drive into our parking lot and utilize our Wi-Fi while they're in their vehicles. And I know that was a question that Mario, you took on. Yeah, um, I think it is possible. Um, I think uh, we haven't decided yet, but maybe we need to limit the hours uh, of um, the, the use of the parking lot as a, a internet access point from, from nine to four when we have security. We are concerned about the safety of the students, so if they don't follow the rules of the social distancing, um, we don't want it to be, um, you know, um, liable to, to have uh, students getting sick in our parking lot for, uh, because, yeah, so that, that can happen. But I think from nine to four, uh, security can be sure that the, the place can be safe to use. Thank you. Um, so we haven't had any more new questions come through just yet on, on either of our Facebook or on our webinar. Um, I guess at this point, um, I know we have quite a few staff and faculty members uh, that have joined us. Um, do you have anything that you wanna share with everybody? Hi, uh, it's Paul. I would like to hear uh, some anecdotes or uh, stories from our faculty about uh, how this is uh, going. We're in the third day here. Let's, it, it would be really valuable to hear your thoughts. Well, I, I had my first live class yesterday and uh, I'm sorry to admit it didn't go as well as I expected. Uh, I'm finding that live lectures and getting student interaction is uh, rather difficult. Uh, so after talking to a few people about this, uh, it looks like the best way to do this would be, you know, for me anyway, would, is to uh, do uh, narrated PowerPoints, you know, a sound bites, short two or three slide uh, sound bites. And then instead of doing a lecture, uh, have, a, uh, have a weekly uh, Q&A session for each course. So that's how I'm going to proceed with that to see how that works. Uh, you know, I've never presented a class online like this before a live class. And so it's, it's a learning experience for me as well. And I've learned quite a bit just in the last 24 hours. Yeah, uh, my classes are going fine. Uh, there are really good attendance. I haven't had student absent yet. Three days I've been taking this. Uh, what I want to know from Mario is that I need the account, Zoom account, because mm -hmm. for a class which is two hour long uh, or a one hour and 30 minute long, I have to set up three meetings. And it's kind of in between sending the invitation and all that, it would rather have no time limit on those. Yeah. The other thing is that uh, with the current account I have, it's give me the option to only have the meeting at top of the hour or every 30 minutes. So I can do it like eight or eight thirty or nine or nine thirty. Mm -hmm. There are classes starting at like eight fifteen, ending at two fifteen, for which I have to do a little bit of uh, change in time, and it's kind of overlapping with their other classes. So what's going on is uh, some of these classes are like ten minutes over, and it's taking time away from us or early. So. It would be great if I can get 
uh, uh, an official Zoom account. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for that, uh, we are working with uh, education. Uh, Morningstar and Curtis is going to be providing the accounts, I hope, today. Uh, they have a list of, of, of faculty who need the, the accounts and, and now um, basically we just need to uh, fill up a form and, and, and the system is going to send you an invite so you can log in as uh, in, in the education account which has no limit. So we, hopefully uh, we are going to have that done uh, today. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to chime in. Uh, this is Danny. And uh, last night I was able to run my uh, community and public health course um, via Zoom. Um, fortunately, I was able to get it right before class. And so that kind of helped things on, along a bit. Um, but I was able to get my students connected. They all joined in and it was a really cool session. Um, of course, we already kind of have a little bit of a protocol, you know, engaging and having conversations. So it wasn't really like anything different. Students were asking questions. Uh, we were able to, I was able to ask questions in the lecture. Um, students were responding, you know, in public health, we're having a really interesting time talking about all the things that are currently going on in the world. And I think it's just a, a key in uh, time as I was sharing with my students to be able to have these conversations as you know they become practitioners of public health. So it was a really cool conversation and just another reassurance that uh, for our students that if they have any issues, if they have any connectivity issues, if they have any questions, now is the time to just be open with communication. Don't be afraid to text, call, um, email. And that was something that I think I got a really good response from, from my students last night. Um, and it was really cool just to kind of touch face. Um, and my students were open to uh, sharing their, their video. So it was really cool to see everybody interact and, and have a good time. Um, and it was a really good lecture last night. So I'm really looking forward to this connection and hopefully it, it, it continues. Uh, my turn. Uh, this is Camillus. Um, a, 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 uh, just like Rajneesh said, I tried to do the, the Zoom account on my own, the one that I have, um, but I couldn't get in to set up a meeting and um, and I was trying different ways. But so I, I, uh, it was good to have that account uh, ASAP, but I know that um, you have to give time to a morning start and Curtis to to figure this out, and so I'm just being patient. And thank you to the students that that uh, are being patient and to um, to hope uh, to get this thing going. But my um, class is conversational, which requires um, before that before this thing hit this uh, after the the semester the midterm semester uh, we were going to go into more how do you say interaction. Uh, as a class, you know, doing more hands-on, you know, uh, words and, and uh, conversations like, uh, you know, describing things that that uh, that are actually right there in their hands, or either you talk to each other about something uh, that's going on in the world, uh, or, or to describe what's in a uh, photo, you know, in in the language, and to try to connect, correct that, or you know, the just ways of uh, conversating or to get the point across but now that's not going to happen and that's the hard part for me is to try to figure out how that's uh, how to do that which I think I've got it it's just um, it's just that but the big worry is again the summer session um, the uh, how that's gonna work we, we we've had people I've had people that were wanting to take a class that are like in Los Angeles and you know um, San Diego and Phoenix and but they can't come out here and so now is their opportunity to take the class on, online uh, but I don't know if they want to do that um, and how because we, we each um, Dwayne and uh, John and myself and Ron and we teach the history part and sometimes it's um, it, it, we we um, do different things, you know, like we have a different style 
for each one of us. And so I don't know how they're doing. And I'm hoping that uh, we can get together and talk about how, how we're um, going to do that um, or how give at pointers and uh, advice on how to how to teach that class, if, if anything. So, and thank you to Neil, um, who gave us uh, some suggestions the other day, uh, last week. Um, so I'm trying to use that and, and that's what I'm uh, figuring out again, because I never, I didn't intend to teach the, the online class, but I guess we're gonna have to move in that direction for the, um, for the students that are out there and um, that they're listening and, I think that it, it requires a lot of patience, a lot of um, uh, waiting and then seeing uh, what's gonna happen, but in, eventually it'll work out and it'll come to a, a place where there's an actually uh, 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 a pattern that, that we can all work with and then something to get used to. But um, I think a lot of people, because they don't understand or they think that it's not gonna work, they kind of give up or they stop out. I know I've lost uh, our two students that um, have told me that they're not gonna continue. So I don't know what the reasons are. I don't wanna ask them, but, um, and, and I know that um, they they uh, were doing pretty good, but I'm hoping that after this is over that we'll go get back to what we had before and and um, then, then start uh, moving on and hopefully they'll come back. But um, But it just depends. But I just wanted to to say that uh, it, it it's just patience, you know. You you just gotta have a lot of um, you know trial and error until the time comes, and then, then you you um, you get you get used uh, used to it. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so much. Thank you, Camilus, for sharing. Um, is there anybody else? If not, I can move on to the next question. Okay, so I have one additional question that it looks like I um, I missed. It says, uh, if I opt into a pass-fail, will that hurt my chances of transferring to an in-state university? Um, specifically for in-state universities, uh, it will not. Um, hurt your chances of transferring. Um, we're more concerned on if you're looking at transferring to an out-of-state or a, a private um, university, that's something you'll wanna contact the um, institution themselves to see how that could possibly affect um, your transferring options. Then, so I'm, I'm juggling devices here on our Facebook and then our webinar. So give me one second, I apologize. Just wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions. It looks like we hit everything on our Facebook feed. Um, what about students uh, who are troubles with emails? Some were having problems and are in need password resets. Um, Mario, did you want to touch on that really quickly? Yes, um, as I uh, mentioned before, we have a phone number and also an email. The phone number is 383-0069 and the, the technical support at DOCC EDU, uh, the IT technicians are going to contact you back and, and give you a, a, the, a reset of the password or if you don't have a username, they can provide that to you too. So it's just a matter of uh, calling them and send an email to technical support at TOCCDU from uh, nine to six uh, 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 the whole week, the, from Monday to Friday. Thank you. Um, and then I just wanna to touch on something um, that Camilus had brought up with his students saying that they, uh, a couple of them uh, decided that they would withdraw um, from the class. Yes, that's still an option for students at this point. However, we strongly encourage you to stick with it. Um, this is new for a lot of us, not just the students, but also the instructors. Um, we are going to be as flexible as possible and work with you. Um, and we have uh, all kinds of assistance here to help you navigate through 
this uh, new process. Uh, so if you can, we definitely encourage you to stick it out. Um, however, if you feel that it is necessary, that it's best for you, um, it's your education, you're in charge of it. If you decide to withdraw, um, that's something you're definitely still able to do. And I'd have you contact our um, Office, Office of Records and, uh, and Admissions, and they can assist you with that. But again, we definitely encourage you to, to stick with everything. And then unless there are any more questions, it looks like we are getting towards the end. Um, I do have one more question on our Facebook page um, asking specifically um, how a withdrawal could impact your financial aid. Um, that is a possibility. We are working um, with the Department of Education um, on getting a, a definitive answer on um, what type of exceptions might be made given the circumstances. Um, and at this point, we haven't gotten anything in writing yet. Uh, so as soon as we find out about that, we will be sending out a notification. Um, our financial aid officer is currently working on putting that together. Okay, it looks like we have about three minutes left. Are there any last minute um, uh, words that our panelists would like to say? I would uh, just like to follow up a little bit on the question that was asked about the Title IV, the PAL financial aid, and uh, our other financial aid will be all good, you know, the uh, American Indian College Fund and so on, but it's the PAL, Title IV out of the Department of Education uh, that is at issue. And as, as Naomi said, she and her staff are working to get a definitive answer. And uh, yesterday, or maybe it was earlier this morning, Betsy DeVos, the DOE, head of DOE, held a meeting and uh, they still did not, as far as I can tell, make any answer to that, that issue. So we will uh, inform the public as soon as we are able to on that, because we know how important that is. But. Uh, there will be Pell Grants again. Um, as Naomi mentioned earlier, if you call and get linked up with uh, either Naomi Tom or Diana Anton, I believe they would uh, assist you over the phone to do your Pell. We just need to make sure that students are aware of that. Yes, and um, I'd like to second that. Now is an optimal time to be putting in your online FAFSA application for the next academic year. Um, that can be done right now. So if you haven't done it already, um, I encourage you to do so. And then our financial aid staff is available to help you, help assist you over the phone. Um, if need be, we can set up a Zoom meeting and, and walk you through it. We can do it together as if we were sitting side by side. Um, so just reach out to us and let us know. Great idea. Well, I haven't seen any more questions come through and it looks like we're at the end of our time. Um, thank you everybody for joining us um, and I think it's possible we might do uh, more of these uh, live sessions throughout the semester just to keep in communication um, uh, with our, our students and keep everyone up to date. Um, thank you all of the panelists for, for helping and in, in putting this together. Um, thank you Paul for also joining us and being a great support for the college. Um, so uh, we will be in touch. If you have questions again reach out to us. We're here to help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi. The panel and all the participants. All right. Thank you. Okay. The live recording has stopped. Okay. <laughs> uh, I forgot to ask Curtis how to stop this, but I got the, the Facebook Live to stop. <laughs> oh, I see. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I think we're done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye. Bye.